that's honey. Alright guys, what up? welcome to another episode of Twitter Status, the podcast. Appreciate you guys stopping by with us today. I got my guy here. Julio. <laughs> Instagram, super low. I'll just say super low. <laughs> Alright, cool, cool. And the photography one? Uh, super pics. Alright, there we go. So yeah, we're just here chopping it up. Uh, appreciate you guys for following us so far. Appreciate all the support we're getting with this podcast. Those who's reached out to me personally um and everything so we're here to take this to the next level and see where we can go so let's talk a little bit more about your story how did you get into cars so cars huh yeah. <laughs> when i was younger i always liked hanging out with my two older cousins they were like 14 years older than me this was back in the day when t3 motorsports was still a thing yeah they used to be next to the texaco gas station i'll never forget that mm-hmm. they used to come pick me up I would always call them like Friday night, yo, come pick me up. We'd go hang out with Brian yeah. and all of them. From shout, out Brian, yeah, shout, yeah. Out, shout out to Brian Hung, yeah. my boy. Um, and this was back when uh, there used to be like the illegal races on uh, yeah, yeah. American Legion Highway, Mexico, in Mexico. In Mexico, yeah. Yep. Uh, and then I was just, I just got into cars. I loved it. My, my cousin picked up an S14. Mm-hmm. And... He got into the drift scene, and, and I was like, wow, this is some shit I ain't never seen before. So I was like, damn, I want, I want in. I want to do this. So what was your first... All right, we'll start with this. What was your first car? My first car was a Honda Civic, and yeah. it wasn't anything crazy. It wasn't an SI. It wasn't an EX. It yeah. wasn't even an EX. It was an LX. Oh. My mom said, you know, this is the car you're getting. Yeah. Because whatever. Bam. I turned 18. This is the what car I got. Was it? it was a 2008 Okay, okay. And this was back in 2009. Okay. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was a newer car, mm-hmm. you know, but it still wasn't like, it wasn't anything fancy. So, I mean, I just started, my, my first mod was, it was lowering springs. It was Skunk 2 lowering springs. I remember those. Yep. Remember those. They were purple. It, yeah, because it was either the Skunk 2 or you went with the Megan. Yep. And that yep. was like your two options. Yep. And then there was that team setup that everybody could get you. Yep. Line. So, my cousin... <clears throat> he always liked working on his car, and I was like, you know what, I want to learn too. Mm-hmm. So I put, I, I did it, me and my friend did it in my driveway, we were like, bam, we're going to do it. Yeah. And uh, we did the lowering springs, I, or just, I just did it, yeah. I don't know, I had no idea what I was doing, I just did it. Nice. <laughs> and it was low, it was uncomfortable because it was just lowering springs, yeah. you know, the shocks yeah. didn't hold up the car well, and uh, then we went to, we went to lose auto Lose exhaust, custom yeah, exhaust. Lose custom exhaust. Yep, yep, that place right there. And then I was like, yo, just straight pipe it oh, all the way back. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my car there. I know your mom was probably like, yo, what the hell? She bro? got mad. She she actually kind of threatened to take the car away because no, she, wh- she, she hooked me up with a down payment for the yeah. car. I mean, I was paying monthly for the car, but mm-hmm. um, she actually was like, yeah, stop messing with the car. Like, I bought the car for you to drive around. Not to not, get tickets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and then I eventually got older and I got a 335. Okay. A BMW 335. What made you go to the Euro side of things? I don't know. Kind of just a, like a luxury thing. I was, yeah. I was like, no, let's try the luxury side of, of things. I got a, uh, I think it was a 2000, 2009, 2010. Mm-hmm. This was in 2012. Yeah. And uh, I, the car just wasn't me. I no. couldn't get into it. It was a 335, so it was like the, the twin turbo mm-hmm. N55 motor. Yep. I think it was an N54 motor, actually. That was a, the, the first gen of those. Um, and I didn't really like it. Yeah. it. I lasted five months with it. And then that's when I picked up the FRS. Yeah. Yep. It was so 2013. What made you see the FRS and, and was like, yo, I want to snag this? Good story. I was driving around with my cousin. Mm-hmm. We were going to his place to grab dinner, and he, he's, at the time, he was a mechanic. Yeah. So he, he knew what, all the cars coming in, what was coming out at the time, and he, we saw one of those, uh, the, the Toyota FRS, mm-hmm. the Scion FRS, parked, and yeah. he was like, yo, that's the new FRS. They make that car in Subaru, and I was like, mm-hmm. where, what is, like, I mean, what's the deal? He goes, yeah, it's a Subaru, and then it's rear-wheel drive. And, you know, he was in the drift scene, yeah. too, so I was like, rear-wheel drive, hmm. It's so like, you know what, I'm going to pick that up. Oh, Went shit. to Toyota, picked it up, bought it, 
and we bought it and uh, two weeks later we were driving that thing down to Florida. We drove it down to Florida, as is, two weeks after I bought it. Now, how was the ride in that? Sucked. <laughs> Terrible. Never do it again. I mean, mind you, I wouldn't do that ride again in a yeah. minivan, mm -hmm. but that, that, that ride sucked. We were going, it was 21 hours, we were straight shot down, straight shot up. Terrible. Terrible idea. So what was the first mod that you were just like, yo, I got to do this? I bought coilovers. Okay. 100%. So wait, we're in the era where it was bags was just coming in. Yeah. So why did you, what made you go coilovers over bags? Function. I wanted, uh, eventually I wanted to drift the car. Yeah. And obviously, you know, coilovers are more, I'm not going to, listen, I'm not going to say bags are. Uh, uh, <laughs> speak your mind, bro, speak your mind. I'm not going to say bags are not performance related, but at the end of the day, coilovers hold better. In, in, the, in the, the racing drift yeah. scene, you know, like coilovers are just more performance enhanced yeah. suspension well, pieces. I will take, because some people speak on it just because they want to speak on it. You know how the, how the guys on the forums are. But I mean, given our friends, at least you had the experience of riding in bad cars to sit there and say, you know what, mm, this is cool, but it's yeah. not me. Yeah. You know? So it was there a time that you ever hit it that you was just like, damn, I wish that was back. Right? No, never. Huh? And you know what's funny? Because your cars were fucking low. All of my low. friends had bags. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was low. I mean, all of my friends had bags. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had bags growing up. I mean, back in the day, mm -hmm. um, Panda had bags. Yeah. All, every car he had was bags. Eric had bags. Eric Don't had bags. Us. I mean, yeah. Mike had bags. Yeah. Uh, Izzy had bags. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone, and and even my friends out of state too. They all had bags. Ian, he yeah. was he was working for Bag Riders at yeah. the time. You know, I was he, scared though because in the group chat you're sitting there seeing these messages of like, "Yo, bro, um, can I borrow your management?" And I was just like, nah, "I don't want to have that situation, man." <laughs> I'm like, "My coil was a good. It's a set height." But then I'll never forget. I just put the carbon lip on the carbon APR splitter, and this is when I had the Subaru, the red one. And I seen a puddle and I was just like, I'm gonna send it. I sent it and everything just blew apart. And then I tried to pull into a parking lot and everything was dragging. I was like, damn, if the car was just a half an inch higher, I'd be fine. Yeah. But no, because it wasn't, everything literally just ripped out underneath. And yep. I was just like, shit. Yep. And, and that's, that's a, a thing, that's a problem I had a lot with the FRS. I mean, yeah. the front bumper has been painted a, a shit ton of times. Yeah. I mean, shout out to Dan, Dan's auto body. <laughs> um, he's painted that front bumper more times than I can even think of. Yeah. The, the fenders, mm. I mean, bro, I, I, I went through fenders, you know, a lot. You know, I, I think I went through three sets of fenders, four mm -hmm. sets of fenders. Uh, I, I got them painted multiple times because I would always rub mm -hmm. and it would burn off the paint. The, the quarter panels, I had to touch up a few times, you know. Yeah. It's stuff like that, but you know what? I never gave up. I stayed on coils. Yeah. Stayed true to myself because that's and what I really time wanted. I you know. You, I was just like, yo, you gonna get back? Yeah. You gonna get back? He's yeah. like, nah, bro. Static for life. Static <laughs> for life. Static for life. I uh, eventually upgraded to the best coilovers in the in the market right now. Mm -hmm. Broadway static. Yeah. What'd you like about Broadway static versus? So say if like somebody's watching this and they they just got after FRS or BRZ, and they do want to go that static but aggressive stance route. What separates Broadway from the other competitors? Broadway Static has the, 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 the smaller coilover, the shorter coilover. Okay. So, you know, as in, for example, not necessarily speaking this is true, but let's say, you know, a regular BC coilover is yay high, you know, mm -hmm. and then Broadway Static makes a coilover this high. Mm -hmm. So it's less, you, you have more height to play with, Yeah. you know, and, and that's what I like about it. And I like the sti stiffness, like you can always valve your, your shock. You can get the, the thicker spring to 44K, 50K. Not, not, not saying you need it. <laughs> you definitely don't need it because the FRS is not heavy. But it's just, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it touches your fender less. Yeah. It's less work for your fender, less stress on, on, on your, you know, your quarter panel and stuff like that, hitting your wheel. And, yeah. and if you want to go the aggressive way, that's, that's the way to go. So the thing that I respected most is that you pretty much stayed in your own lane when it came to the building. It's not like you were involved with the community, but it was just like everybody during that time period was running either a Pandem kit, a Rocket Bunny kit, and then here was you staying true to the original form factor of the vehicle. Um, 
and running the wheel specs and things like that. How was it like doing your research and knowing what to go with the spring weight? Like, was it overwhelming for you, or was you just like, ah, I think I can handle this? Um, it, it was overwhelming just because, you know, obviously an FRS is five by one hundred, yeah. so it, it wasn't be, it wasn't that easy like where I could be like, hey, let me borrow your wheel and throw it on the car, mm -hmm. see if it fits. It was more or less like uh, I kind of just had the finagle, I don't know, just throw, buy a wheel, throw a spacer on it, see if yeah. it fits, and then add that spacer to the offset. And then, you know, throw, buy a barrel, yeah. throw a barrel in the rear to see if it touches the coilover. Yeah. It was like, you know, it was time consuming is that. Yeah. It, it, I just pretty much had to do things myself. And then I came across this guy, um, his name was Vic. He lives in New York. Mm. He had an FRS. And I saw him at the time. This was maybe 2015. I saw him fit in an 11 and a half wide wheel in his FRS. And I was like, there's no way. He, I don't even know how you would. There's no way. I know the space, but there's yeah. not that much space. Like, bro, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> an 11 and a half, bro, in, in, in a small car like that is, is, is pretty big. Yeah. And I was like, I got to do it. I got I to gotta match it. Yeah. I got to. But he had the 11 and a half and it was like, it was like only like a minus 12 offset. Mm -hmm. So I was like, only, you know what? Only. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. But this was uh, at the time where like, you know, big wheels are starting to come out and people were getting into the, like the lower offset and stuff. And you know what? Yeah. And, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stay on the, on the 11s and I'm going to buy the, the lowest offset wheel that they offer, mm -hmm. which was minus 40 at the time. And, oh. and, I, and I just threw the wheel on and I, I just made it work. I, I cut endless amount of shit on that car. Yeah. I mean, I would sit in the driveway just cutting. I bought a die grinder, I bought a cutting wheel, and I just, I just cut. That's crazy. I did things the right way, obviously. Yeah. You know, safe. I rubber seal coated the frame. Yeah. Stuff like that, you, you know? Because out here, you got it. Yeah, yeah. It, it don't take much to rust up out here. It really doesn't. Yeah. Once it starts, man, it's yeah. a process to yeah. get it back to what it was. Yep. So what was that first set of wheels that you grabbed? The first set of wheels were the SSR SP1s. Yeah. The five-spoke mm -hmm. classic. It's like the competitor to like the work uh, Meisters. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. And shout out to Brian again. He got me those yeah. wheels. He worked at Prospec at the time. And he was like, yo, these are the wheels to buy. He was actually trying to get me not to get like yeah. a low offset, and I was like, nah, I want the low offset. I want, I want what I want, because I know what I yeah. want, and that's what I want. So you had a few sets of wheels. So if you can go back, right, what would you say is the top five wheels for that car that you like? The top five wheels? Your top five. My, my number one wheel that I ran on that car was the Work Meister mm -hmm. L1s. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, they're, it's a newer style. Yeah. wheel but to me they're already timeless mm -hmm. it's it's i mean that wheel is perfect in every way every way i mean it had the curve it had the out it had the popped out face yeah it was six spoke clean simple mm -hmm. and 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 it was work you know it's top of the line exactly you know but that that the the minervas Number two. Number two. Okay. Number two. I ran the, the RPF ones, which is, I would say, number three because it's just clean, no bolts. Wheel. Yeah, no, no, no bolts. It's just, just a, a wheel, cast wheel. Mm -hmm. um, the S SP ones. Yeah. And then back in the day when I first got the car, I had these uh, N key. NT03 wheels. Oh, I know. I want to say. About. Yeah, I, know no, I think about. those. I think those, those ones with the dual valve. Like one was supposed to be like. There was a set of wheels that came and they had two valves on it. I think it was no, that no, it was it was it was more of a cast wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it used to be a. There was one N key wheel that came out that was a track wheel, and I remember it had two valves. I said, like, "Why the hell does it have two valves?" And then I found out from a track guy. One was for regular air, and the other one was for nitrogen. Because if you're hitting the track, nitrogen weighs less. Yeah, no, 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 like, no, no. This one, this one didn't have that. It was just okay. a simple wheel. Just, uh, and I, I just bought the biggest wheel again, the yeah. biggest wheel oh I could my find. Oh my god! Just, <laughs> it, I, it, 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 this, it, so there's, there's no by seven and a half. There's no eight and a half, nine and a half. No, you, no? never. Everything How long was, did the stock wheels last with you? The stock wheels lasted about four months. 
Oh my God. Four months. Did you keep the stock wheels? No. Nope. Nope. I, I sold them to some guy in <laughs> Not Cape even Cod. for dailies? You're 400 not, bucks. You're not going to disrespect the car? Bro, you're not brand, gonna brand new wheels. <laughs> oh I mean, God. I put 3,000 miles on them because yeah. I drove to Florida. Yeah. I sold them. I said, I don't want anything to do with them. Oh my God. I never bought a wheel that was 10 and a half or less. I always, it was always 10 and a half or 11s. I, I ran on that car. So a lot of people, when they go static, they think it's just the strut and then some wheels. But we know that when you're building a car, it, it takes a whole lot more to that. What's some of the work and some of the challenges that you had to face with building the FRS to be static king? The number, <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> static king. <laughs> maybe at the time, yeah. maybe at the time, but everyone outgrew that. Yeah. Um, but the, the number one problem that I had was the wheel, the front wheels hitting the frame. Okay. And, and obviously, you know, you hit the frame, you can't mm -hmm. go lower than that. So, um, Obviously, I, I, yeah. Cut, yeah. <laughs> I cut the Y-frame, yeah. and uh, I bent them. To, it, it, would, it would be squared. It was squared, so I, I cut diagonal, so it would yeah. be a triangle, and then I bent them to become a triangle. Yeah, exactly. And okay. then I rubber seal coated. That was the number one problem I had. Right. And, and I, didn't even, I didn't even do research. <laughs> I didn't oh know who cut He's like, yo, this frame. has got to go. <laughs> this has got to go. I said, this has got to go. Yeah. And I, I cut that. Um, the number two problem was running the camber in the front was the ball joints. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, I never had a trailer, never mm -hmm. had a truck. So I just drove to yeah. car shows. That was, that was my fear was ball joints popping mm -hmm. on the highway, you know, on my way to New York or something. I would have been ball joints and axles. Yeah. I would have been like, yo, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, axles. But... The axles are easier to work with because if you run camber from the top, mm -hmm. they, the axles kind of stay in place instead of yeah, popping out. Exactly. You know? That was the problem with uh, when I had the green Subi, when I did the rear low control arms and I was running all that camber for the rotor forms, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, I can't blow. Nah. I was like, yo, we got to dial it back in just a little bit. That's yeah. way too aggressive, yeah. bro. Like, yep. So I always played it safe mm -hmm. in the rear. Uh, my lower control arms were set to negative two degrees of camber. Okay. And that was it. Every, okay. all, the rest of the camber came from the top. Yeah. Who'd you go with with lowers on yours? I went with Voodoo 13 USA. Okay. okay. Uh, that was the, the company. That it was, it, it's a drift company and it, yeah. was, it was coming up back in the day and uh, Brian suggested the yeah. Voodoo 13 USA con control arms and that's what I went with. Got the toe arms, got the control arms. I got the sway bar links. I eventually took those off too. No, but sway bars that. didn't sway last bars, long. Yo, my boy DJ, he's like, yo, <laughs> he has it now in the M4, but before he was like, nah, I don't have no sway bars right over there. He's like, I'm good. Yeah. You know, he's, like, yeah. he's like, I don't need it. I'm riding low. And I'm like, yeah. I guess, bro. I was like, that's wild. Yep. Um, I, I ran those. I took those off. Um, and then eventually I switched. The, the control arm stayed, but yeah. then I switched kind of my, all of my suspension pieces to Racer X. Okay. Um, I, I upgraded the up control arm to Racer X, the front the lower control parts arm. On those guys. Racer X? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. They helped me a lot because um, I, my upper control arms, the first ones I actually bought were from Dominant. Mm -hmm. uh, he was doing custom welding at the time, so they were all, you know, yeah. made to order. Uh, it took like three months to get them, but the j joints weren't like good. Yeah. They broke on me. Oh, shit. Yeah. So <laughs> they broke on me and my wheel popped off, ruined my quarter panel. And uh, that happened. So I, I reached out to race. To you. <laughs> yeah. I reached out to racer. Yeah. The, the FRS was down for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. I reached out to racer X and now we're like, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get you joints right now. We'll just, just tell us um, the size of the upper control arm and stuff like that. You know, I was like, you know what? I'm not even doing that. I'm just going to send you the upper control arms. Mm -hmm. Just you know, figured out. Yep, do the joint, and they sent them out to me, and then I eventually I just I was I abandoned that project, and I was like, just get me Racer X con control arms, right. and that's it. So the car's out, you got it modded, it's in its you know rendition or its phase that it's in right then and there, and now you're out in the scene. What's the year that you was really outside with? The FRS. I was outside every year. Yeah. I mean, I was outside. I was hitting Wicked Big Meat. Yeah. I was going to Tuner Evo. Even when the car was white. Yeah. I was hitting everything because I was young. I mean, I didn't really have anything to do. And yeah. I was, my girlfriend was just, at the time, she was like, let's go. Let's do it. 
we out. Let's go. Did you ever bring the car to H2O? I never brought the car to H2O. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It was too far for me, yeah. and, and I didn't really have a trailer. I mean, it's a 12-hour drive, and that's... And then also that car on the strip, you know you're getting tired. Oh, yeah. I'm, you I'm, know immediately you were getting tired. Yeah. yeah. I didn't really care for, like, the whole, um, you know, popularity yeah, contest. Yeah, no, no, no. It was more like cruising the strip with the guy. Yeah, that's it, what it was for it us. It was like, cool. It was cool. Yeah. But, it, you know, H2 became a popularity contest, at the, and, yeah. and I didn't really care for that. Yeah. I did go, mm -hmm. but not with the FRS. I didn't really care for that. So for you, what was some of the best shows that you were hitting around that time frame? And I mean, not just best shows like uh, hype-wise, but I meant like the vibe, like, you know, going cruising down with the fellas and things yeah. like that. Like, no, what, uh, all around, what was some of the better shows that you traveled to? The best show that I went to cruising with you guys was Tuna Revo. Yeah. 100% Philly. Yeah. Uh, but there was, there was good, good car shows. Mm. Uh, Stance Wars. Yeah. They were only here for one year. I know, I know. The, in, in, uh, in and out. <laughs> in and out, yeah. They didn't really like the East Coast, but mm -hmm. Stance was, uh, was all right. Okay. Um, I liked the clean culture shows mm -hmm. they were putting out at the time. Uh, Wicked Big Meat was mm -hmm. good, but I didn't really like Wicked Big Meat because of the, the location. I mean, yeah. being static, yeah. they were in a dirt. Dude, road. driving through that first fucking... Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. So I got stuck, and, and I just spoke to the guy, and I was like, hey, listen... My car isn't going to make it down here. Can I just park it here? He let me park it there all day. I was pretty much VIP. Yeah. And that's, that was the only, really, only, the only time that I brought it to Wicked Big Me, yeah. just because of the location. But yeah. it was a good show. Damn. Because I remember the last time that I seen your car with you at the show was, it was broke? Was it broke? It was Broke East, and yeah, it was at that same venue. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but that show, they opened the gate. Uh -huh, on the on right the side, yep, yep. yep when Wicked that. Big Meat was happening. Because when I seen you there, I was like, how the fuck did he get in here, bro? And I'm yeah. like, nah. Yeah, when Wicked Big Meat was going, they were making you go around the dirt path. Exactly. And I didn't like that. Nah. It, you spend all day washing your car, cleaning your car, then you have to drive through five minutes of dirt. You're just right. like, bro, right. come on. And, and yeah, <laughs> and you're picking up souvenirs on the way, you know, you're yeah. picking up rocks. Yeah, man. So, we talked about the cars, we talked about the shows. Um, what was it like being a part of a group. Um, I remember at one point, you know, you were with Camber Gang, and, and what's it like back then to you versus now being part of these social media groups? Because there was a lot at that time. There was Violent, there was Camber Gang, there was Clean Culture. It was us, even though we really didn't push more of like the car club s type things. There was Stance Innovators. There was a lot out at that time. Yeah, no, there was. And everybody kind of like gravitated to their own group. Actually, and some yeah. stayed, some left, you know, things like that. So what was it like for you being a part of a group like that? Um, it was cool. I liked it. Just because of the, the quality in cars. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Camber Gang was kind of like an exclusive. Yeah, it was club at the time or whatever. Which everybody you know what was saying. trying to get everybody in. Everybody was everybody trying was, to get in. You know if you I'm knew saying? somebody was just like, yo, how do I get in? How do I get in? How do I get yeah, in? It was, it was crazy. And man, the messages I got on Instagram was like, bro, I'm, I got this car, but I just want to get into Cambridge. And it'd be like nonstop. Mm -hmm. And it never really got annoying, I want to say, because yeah. you know you, you, all, you always want to support everybody and, yeah. and, and get the best out of everyone. But uh, that's, that's kind of what... Camber Gang did for me. They they got the best out of me, you know. Um, Panda being part of Camber Gang. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Vic at the yep. time when he had the the uh, LSB E46 M3. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, he was part of Camber Gang, and then I met um, Doug mm -hmm. from uh, deep in Massachusetts, like yeah. Sturbridge. Yeah. He was part of Camber Gang. I eventually met Lewis, you know, which is the the owner of Camber Gang, and he yeah. was pretty cool. I liked him, uh, and then I, I through them I met Chris, IS yeah. three hundred Chris. I met um, what was that guy's name? He was from New York. He had the static uh, Nissan three seventy Z. It was blue. It was uh, he was part of Cambridge Gang, and I, I looked up to him too because yeah. he was static. Yeah, you know, being being in Cambridge Gang. He was static, and it was it was really cool to see that car mm -hmm. drive around New York. You know, yeah. New York, and New York roads. I mean, shoot. <laughs> yeah, New York yeah. is bad, but he was part of Camber Gang, um, and 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 I liked it. And then I met Spencer yeah. Nielsen. Mm -hmm. He was part of Camber Gang. I mean, they're all cool and they're all chill. It was and dope. So it seems like it was a networking. Yeah, type of and and it, that that 
club was never to me like a big dick contest. You know, no nobody was trying to outdo no one. Yeah. Everyone was just chill, mellow. Yeah, because when I first and that's it. Met Lewis and I talked to him. I was just like, oh, this dude, I can fuck with him because he really don't. Because at that tail end of when I was really outside, it was more of not the quantity. I mean, the quality of the group it was more like the quantity. Everybody wanted to have like 50 friggin' or 150 members. And the cars weren't even, half the cars weren't even outside at the time. Right. And then when I talked to him, it seemed like he really didn't care about that type shit. He's more like, yo, I'd rather fuck with the person versus fuck with all the extra stuff that it comes with. Yeah. Yep. So he was a yep. really cool dude. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and at that time, too, like, he was going to every show. So, yeah. like, you go to the show. Oh, yeah, they were, yo, y'all were outside. You, like, yeah. you could park at the booth, you know? Mm-hmm. It, was, it was always cool because you would always have the group chat and stuff, and then when the car show came, yeah. everybody would hang out in person, and, and you know, it'd be mm-hmm. the same thing over again. That's what I liked about it. So now we talked about shows. We talked about the car clubs and everything like that. And we transition now, like myself, we get older and we hit a part of the car scene where we grow family. So what's that balance like for you as you become dad, but also car guy? And we're now outside as much, but we're still somewhat active. How, how have you found your balance for yourself being a dad? It, it, it's definitely tough because, um, because of the, uh, you know, one minute, it's a yes, you know, you're going to the car show mm-hmm. and then your kid wakes up in the morning with a stomach ache and it's like, ah, we yeah. can't really go. <laughs> so, and you, you kind of got to, you, you, you got to take it, you know, yeah. you can't go, you can't go. It, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And you're excited to go to the show because, you know, you're, deep down, you're still going to go see cars you, you enjoy seeing and stuff. Mm-hmm. But you also can't be mad at your kid for not allowing you to go, exactly. you know, exactly. so it, it's, it's a hit or miss. And I, I've, the first I would say six, seven months, it was very hard for me mm-hmm. just because I'm, I wasn't used to it. I, I've never experienced it in my life. But as you know, as my kid got older, I, I, I learned to deal with it. And I, yeah. I, I you know, I, I'm still happy that I don't go to car shows yeah. and stuff. You know, I've dealt with it. I do more cars and coffee now just because I can go yeah, 8 a.m. Yeah, before yeah. my kid wakes up and I'm back home, you know, mm-hmm. and spend the day with my kid too, you know? Mm-hmm. I definitely know the vibe because for me, one of my biggest points that I hit for myself was when COVID happened. And we didn't know what was going to happen to shows and everything like that. But, you know, I was really outside flights, traveling, doing the media thing and everything like that. But when COVID happened, and I, sat, I sat down. I got to spend time with my family. I was just like, damn, I'm really robbing my kids of this, this summer. It's like, we should be, like, just because we're taking a trip to Philly to see cars... Like, and even though, like, I would try to say, hey, we'll spend one day at the car show, the next day we'll do our own thing, like, I was robbing them of too many weekends that we could have went out. So that, that summer we went Disneyland, we went all over and everything like that, and I was just like, yo, I actually like this a lot more and then just doing the car show whenever I right. want, you know. But then naturally certain things, like most people in the car scene, that's when you start seeing the hype kind of, like, fall down where people who used to hit you up all the time they kind of less frequent and also stuff like that. How's that been for you? Like, as you transition to dad mode and the car's not outside as much, did you find that uh, the friends or the bros in the car scene, did you see them distancing themselves or did you keep a small circle always? Um, my circle's still the same people yeah. at the end of the day, you know, like we still hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Panda, I mean, he does his own thing. But yeah. We talk every here and there, I mean, Izzy, Mike, it's all the same people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It, it's not really more, it's not really about cars. Uh, my friend Mike's getting married this yeah. summer, you know, and it's not, it's not car related, but yeah. we still hang out. It's a wedding, you know, it's, mm. it's stuff like that. We, I still have parties in my backyard and, and yeah. you know, you guys are always invited and stuff. And it's, it just, it became more than cars, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, people still have their cars and stuff, mm. but we don't, we don't go out as much, mm. but we still hang out, you it's, know? That's the thing with social media now. I felt like, Social media has become so, I guess, anti-social where a lot of people are chasing the clicks, the likes, the following and things like that. So they don't really have that core group of friends. And what do you say about somebody who's coming up in the car scene and then now get, catching their buzz with the car? Uh, don't do it for someone else. 100%. I mean, I, I know you guys hear it all the time. And time and time again, don't do it for someone else. You know, don't build your car for someone else to like it. 
Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people, especially today in today's world, where there's TikToks and uh, there's a the, lot. the there's reels, a lot. the Instagram reels and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I mean, I never really got into that, but mm -hmm. I see people deleting photos and deleting TikToks or hiding their likes because they didn't get to that, that level. milestone. <laughs> it's want. weird, and, bro. And it, it's it's yeah. just like, bro, who cares, you know? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if the car makes you happy, that's yeah. all that matters, yeah. you know? Build the car to your desire, you know? If, if you like red, who's to tell you not to like red? You know, you like red, paint the car red. Yeah. Who cares? If you like big wheels, put, put big wheels on your car. If you like mm -hmm. coils, it, people say that coilovers are for poor people, blah, blah, I know. blah, all because shit, they bro. can't I've afford bags. Shit. I was just like, yo, all right, bro, if you think so, because, yeah. all right. <laughs> people feel like bags are expensive, all right, Get yourself a, your first set of Olins or any other type of real coilover. Right. And you'll know the difference. Right. And then coilovers are the same thing with bags now. It's like you get what you actually pay for because now they have a lot more affordable brands for bags. But go ahead and ride on that strut as low as possible. Let me know how, how it feels and yeah. how it rides and yeah. how long the freaking strut lasts. Like, right. I mean, you know, for the, the coilovers for me, I mean, yeah, they were cheaper and stuff. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, the bags would have saved me money. I mean, I would have. Save myself on like what mm. three sets of fenders? How paint, many lips? Paint, paint, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I remember <laughs> I put on a lip, and 20 minutes later it was down back there on the highway. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And yeah. and I would have saved myself on that time uh, on on money that way. But I chose to stay true to myself, and I like coilovers. I don't. I didn't really care what anybody said, and I was the only one in the crew yeah. on coilovers. You know, Literally. I would get stuck at gas stations. Yo. Oh my God, yeah. I've just seen the car like this yeah, and I was like, oh my God, I mean, it was my guy. Yeah. But it just hit different because when you see a car that's static rolling down the road and then you see everybody else up, aired up, yeah. tire gap, all yeah. this other shit like yeah. that, I'm just like, damn, I got to find my car. Yeah. Like find a way for my car to like hit, <laughs> like, yo, I was just like, damn, bro, because I remember even seeing you pull into FUDs, man, and I was just like, shit, yo, this car's hit right now. It's just the fitment was on point. Now, Thank you. we talked about transitioning to the dad life, but then you also had another transition, and that was photography. How was that now going into the photography phase for you? Did you know before, did you always want to pick up the camera, or was it something that you just like, hey, I want to try something different? Yeah, I just want to try something different. And I was tired of getting charged for, <laughs> for people that made me wait three weeks for photos and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And, and I... When I wanted to post on Instagram or post on Facebook, mm -hmm. DFRS, I wanted to post it now, you know? And yeah. I mean, you always had an iPhone, but it mm -hmm. wasn't like... It wasn't... A good same. photo, you know? It yeah. was just like a whatever. Mm -hmm. The photo you got is what you got. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Let me, let me pick up a camera. And I picked up a camera. I did my research. I, did, I grabbed the, the cheapest full-frame camera I could mm -hmm. find, and that, that was it. Yeah. Well, I mean, going into photography, what would be some of the recommendations that you would have for a person um, just starting out? Like, Just starting out is if you're going to buy a camera that's crop censored, save your money and save and invest in, in a hobby that's, that's worthwhile because photography is worthwhile. Yeah. Photography is a good hobby and invest in it and buy a full frame camera. Uh, there's cheap full frame cameras out there mm -hmm. and buy a large storage SD card because yeah. take photos, take photos, take photos, take photos. Mm -hmm. Photos are memories you'll have 30 years from now, 40 years from now. You know, you'll, I still look through photos of me when I was a kid and I'm just like, wow, like, you know, you, you have photos of yourself growing up, going through life of, of things you eventually mm -hmm. wanted to take photos of, you know, and, yeah. and that stuff stays with you for forever, you know, and that's, that's, that's what I can recommend. It's large storage I, uh, SD cards. Yeah full frame camera mm -hmm. and just go 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 at it take photos of whatever bro bring your camera everywhere there was um for like five six years my camera stayed in my car and it yeah. went with me everywhere yeah and if I, I and did it, the yeah. same thing yeah everything Dude, i was doing yeah. like random portraits inside target bro people was looking at yeah. me weird but yeah. i was just like hey i'm getting i, I wanted to shoot everything right and and, everything. It, and and as weird as it people may think you are mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to never probably ever mm -hmm. see that person again, mm -hmm. you know? And who cares yeah. if, if they think you're weird because you're never going to see them again. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to take that photo, it's going to stay with you forever, you exactly. know? And that's, that's what counts. So I'm looking at your photography. You've always had a balance between cars and portraits. 
is it an equal balance in the passion or which one do you like more? Um, or which one did you grow into liking more? So in the beginning, obviously, you know, I, I enjoyed uh, taking photos of cars, but as, as, um, as time went, there's, there's really only so many angles you can get of cars, you know? I know how I feel. <laughs> you know, it, it, and it gets old because, yeah. I mean, it, it is a different car, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the same photos over and over. It's, it's just the front side, the yeah. back side. Whereas in portraits, you know, people can change clothes. Mm -hmm. People can look left. People can look right. Yeah. People, you can change the location. Um, you can do, you know, like different sorts of portraits. Uh, it, it's just more facial expressions. You know, yeah. there's multiple facial expressions, and, and that, that's what I like. You know, you can change, yeah. you know. You can and change a lot. <laughs> you, can do, you can do, like, uh, maternity photos. You can do wedding photos. I mean, you could do fall photos. Mm -hmm. You could do summer photos at the beach. You can yeah. take photos of you at Target. Yeah. You know, you can take photos anywhere, and, and that's what I like about portraits. So with me, I personally felt like I learned a lot because when I first started photography, I wanted to put myself in the worst situations possible because I was like, everybody on YouTube, which is where I got a lot of my photography education besides from my personal friends, was golden hour, golden hour, golden hour, golden hour, golden hour. But everything is kind of just easy. It's cookie cutter with shooting at golden hour. So I was to learn more. I put myself in the worst situations possible. Uh, I was shooting at night. I was shooting during the winter. Uh, it was freezing cold and just doing all this types of stuff. But even with that being said, I felt like I learned so much more from doing portraits than just shooting cars. It's crazy. Right. Because you understand more of your composition. You understand more of your lighting. You understand more of skin tones. Skin um, tones. Skin tones was like crazy because the way how the light hits really affects how the skin is. Right. Um, I agree. What was that growing into that space for you? Was it difficult or was it just like, hey, I had to get practice more? It's hard because... Um, my problem was, you know, for uh, us darker complexity people, mm -hmm. uh, when, when the sun hit you, I all of a sudden turn orange, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and, and it's hard because it's like you, you want to get the right tone and, yeah. and it's hard to fix an orange or yeah. it's hard to fix an a, a overexposed mm -hmm. photo, you know? Yeah. And, and that's the part because you underexpose the photo, now you're orange. Mm -hmm. Or if you overexpose the photo, now you don't have a background. Exactly. And that's the hard part. You know, because once the car is blue, it's blue. It's blue. I've seen people play with the slider and change. I was like, all right, you know. Yeah, yeah. You can always hit your HSL boxes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah. you, if, it's, if, it, if the photo's overexposed, it's yeah, overexposed. It's exposed, you know what I'm you saying? Know, exactly. And you, ain't really much fixing on that. So what do you shoot with now? I still, you know, I still got that, yeah. that cheap uh, full frame camera that hey, I got man, listen, got the original. Tag don't matter. Like, That's it. It's, it's like LaShawn has told me before. It's you learn your gear. Because I've seen some photos with some vintage cameras with a vintage lens that will blow the smoke oh, off yeah. of anything that's yeah. new. And <clears throat> I've seen some cameras that, at a thrift shop and I looked at a YouTube video of that camera and I wished I picked it up because I've seen some of the photos that some of the guys have taken with those cameras and it's just like, Jesus Christ. Like yeah. I follow Volandis and he shoots film and portrait and those photos and the skin tones on right. that. Yeah, I mean, anything. not to contradict myself because I do suggest, you know, everyone, mm. uh, you know, buy a full frame camera. I, yeah. I'm not to contradict myself, but mm. if, if you just can't, you know, crop sensors are the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get the full, uh, uh, what's it called? The full, uh, the full sensor or the full, um, the full, uh, what's it called? You don't take full advantage of your lens, yeah. you know, because a 2470 now becomes like a 3585, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it, it still takes a photo, yeah. you know, and, and it still creates a memory for you. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's, there's like Fuji films, Pentaxes from the 1990s that still mm -hmm. take ridiculous photos, yeah. you know, and, and they're not full frame cameras, you know. But again, not to contradict myself, I, I still do yeah. suggest a full frame camera. Yeah, but definitely get it. Cause if, if you can't, mm -hmm. you know. And get yourself a good body, but also some good glass, you know, yeah. because even if you can't go with like a G Master lens from Sony, um, Sigma offers great glass that you can put on there and it's very cost effective yep. for the consumer. Um, so now earlier we talked about, you know, the idea of you potentially going back in the scene and things like that. Um, and we always keep it, even though we're not like fully involved, involved in the scene, we always, you know, you can see stuff online and things like that. How do you feel about the car scene now? Um, 
the the car scene now it, it's you know there's people that are that are still into the car scene that do it for cars and stuff like that but yeah. there's also people that you know they're like uh, hey guys thank you for 40,000 like uh, fo likes or followers and mm -hmm. stuff like that and it's just kind of those are the type of people that I feel like did you really build your car for you yeah uh, you know yeah. and and the people that are always constantly like deleting photos and hiding their stuff yeah and that's that's kind of what I don't like really about the car scene mm -hmm. but no don't get me wrong there's there's still a high amount of people that are generally into cars mm -hmm. and, and I, I like that yeah and, and the car scene is always gonna be the car scene I, I will always love it mm -hmm. I will always love car shows and I, I think you know people like electro people yeah. like Jay of Tuna Revo and stuff yeah. like that um, can I beat yeah. The, those guys, you Dude. for for always continuing the the car shows, the car yeah. events, you know, for always hooking us up, and I, I thank you guys for it. Yeah, damn, you made me think about first class. First class that, fit, that man. That was huh? a vibe. That, that was, was a good time. Yeah, man, the cars there, the vibe there, it was very just. It was I elite. That event. Yeah, it was elite. Yeah. yeah, there was no bullshit going on with that event. <laughs> I wish they came, back, but I get it. I get it, and the separation and things like that, but. Yeah, you know, man, it happens. Like, it happens. Yeah, nothing, it happens. Nothing happens. lasts forever, you know, I guess. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Nothing lasts forever. All right, now we're back. We're going to talk about um, the local car scene up here in Mass and some of the events and cars and people and the whole gang and things like that. So, you know, for people who are up here, because with me, with, you know, this new phase in tuner status, I really want to highlight and showcase a lot of the people first, cars second, because... It's kind of a disconnect with social media and people where all they know is the cars and the caption or like Instagram now I feel like is more of a trending music app versus an actual, you know, photography app now, you know. Your photos only get seen if you're using the right audio for your reels and things like that. Um, how do you feel about the local car scene right now versus it's back then? It's definitely grown a lot. Yeah definitely grown a lot. I mean, it's, it's more, it's high density out here now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, uh, when I was building my car and stuff, they were like, you're from Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> they build cars out there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of people thought that from Connecticut up there. Was yeah. It was just, just dead. I mean, yeah. who builds a car in Maine, you know, you know. <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's definitely bigger now. I mean, mm. you got two Revo coming out to Rhode Island this year, Yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, that never happened back, no. back in the day. I always had to drive out to them. Yeah, a lot of us always had to drive out. Yeah, and it was, it was always in Jersey, Connecticut for um, uh, what's that first uh, show that used to happen? Yukon. Yukon. Yeah, yeah. And but, we used to. It was always out of state for us. You yeah. know, guys that were you know, I don't want to say elites, but the guys that actually were outside with their cars and wanted to travel. That cared like that. to go yeah. to car shows. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So you know, with the density of the cars, there's a lot more clubs now. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, I like it because, you know, everyone's making friends. Mm -hmm. Everyone's, you know, kind of finding their own little crew and, yeah. and making friends. No no one's really being an outsider. And if yeah. you, if you know, it, there's just more clubs. And it, back then it was like, like you said, you know, it was just violent camber gang stuff. And everyone kind of just felt like if you weren't part of that, you were kind of lame. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that's not true. That's yeah. not true. Now, for you as a photographer in the media space, how do you feel about the amount of cars that's out right now? I like it. Yeah. You can take photos. You can you can always reach out. There's more mm -hmm. content to be made. How do you do? You feel like you're more selective with who you want to shoot now, or are you open to link with anybody? At the end of the day, if you if you contact me, you know I'm mm -hmm. gonna take a photo of your car because it you know you're reaching out to me to make mm -hmm. a memory of your car for you. Yeah. You know it's it's not me. There's there's no there's no reason why to, to be snobby and say your car's a piece of shit. I'm not gonna take that's not true because yeah. your car's not a piece of shit. If mm -hmm. you like it, you drive it around. It's not a piece of shit to you. Yeah. Who am I to tell you you know it's a piece of shit? That's not true. Yeah. And 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 I enjoy making someone happy, and yeah. that's that that's what matters. Because it gets weird because with the photographer, some people are standoffish. Like I've, the weirdest question I've gotten as a photographer when I ask somebody to shoot their car, they literally ask me how many followers do I have, and I was just like, what? the does that have to do with because I can have zero followers and literally produce the best content that you've ever seen or right. somebody else could. Right. I mean But it's a weird space. It's weird, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and um yeah, I mean there back then there was people taking photography 
taking photos of things and there was no Instagram and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. And, and they were producing, you know, high quality photos. Mm. You know, there's, there's photos of the Prudential, for example, or the John Hancock back yeah. in the day. And in that, that guy didn't do it for likes. Who cares? Exactly. It's photography. How do you feel about the adaptation between reels versus photos? Because you know they're pushing reels more. Yeah, it's just I don't know. I I I, I can't get into it yeah. just because I'm an older person. Yeah, I'm try I'm I'm doing it because I like new things and learning new things. It's not about doing the reels to try to get the likes. I'm doing it because I'm like, you know what? Let me. There's more to learn. Just the same way how I stepped out of from cars to portraits, and it was a whole other world with that. The short, the short form content, there's a whole, and I'll never consider myself a video guy, like what these guys like LaShawn and Truman and Eric oh, and, yeah. and Halcyon and Crispy, what all these guys are doing, they're making literally movies. High quality movies. Like, like yeah. I would never put yeah. myself in the same realm with them, right. but you know, I've been trying a little bit and mess around with it and I kind of like it just because it's keeping me active, it's keeping the tools sharp, you right. know what I'm saying? So, right. um, but it's different now it because is. Now people are just kind of just like, why hire you as a photographer if I can produce on my iPhone and get just as many likes? They're not really concerned about the quality or the photo being out of focus or the video being out of focus or things like that. They're just like, if it's getting the likes, it's garnering the likes. How's that for you as a photographer? Like, like I said before, I stay true to myself. I mean, yeah. you go on my Instagram page, you'll see maybe one or two videos mm -hmm. and, and the rest is photos. I told myself when I got into photography, I'll never do videos because I, 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 I'm not into it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. I felt that way for a long yeah. time, dude, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And, and that's, that's just how, how I act. You know, I, I stay true to myself. So yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I get, you know, the real, you know, people growing, getting their likes and stuff like that. But yeah. it's just not really for me. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really like the real thing. I can't get into it. I don't have the time. I don't have the patience mm -hmm. to you know, sh up and down, left and right. It's a lot, dude. It's a, it's lot. a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, lot. man. I, it. let, let me tell you, thank God you don't have to pay for YouTube classes, man. Because, yo, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of videos I had to learn and pick up from. Yeah. Um, but we talked about the scene. We talked about photography. We talked about cars and, and your personal bills and things like that. Um, and as a matter of fact, let's, step, let's drop into this real quick. So you've sold the FRS now. Um, you got a truck? Oh, don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that being about the truck gang and truck life and, 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 cause y'all get away with murder with them offsets on those things, man. Some of the wheels I see on trucks, bro, is like, man. what's it like building a truck? Let me tell you. Cause you went from the lowest car to the literally the highest fucking thing possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really, it's actually, it's not high. There's, there's way, you well, know, bigger lifts. Big. It, it's pretty big. Yeah. No, it's pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, me being a UPS driver, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I drive a big truck five days a week. Okay. So I'm, I'm already used to the, the, the bigness of, of, of a car. Yeah. And um, I, just, I just liked it. I, yeah. I saw a truck one day and I was like, damn, those are some big ass wheels. Yeah. And they're like, these are small. They can make bigger wheels. Oh, and I'm shit. like, what's the offset on that shit? He's like, minus 91. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> That's wild. So, you know, That's I picked wild. up. Uh, yeah, it is wild. I picked up an F-150 and I was like, you know what? I want to go bigger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get an F-250. Yeah. And I got the F-250 and then I bought big wheels. And I'm like, they just fit. Yeah. They turn, they rub. The family fits. Everyone's comfortable. Yeah. My wife can literally lay down in the truck. Yeah. And and I'm and I still have space. I mean, That's it's wild. got four cup holders. That's wild. I mean, the FRS had one and yeah. and barely, you know. Yeah, but literally going from an FRS gas tank to that gas tank though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I fill up with like 120, 130 bucks, mm -hmm. and the FRS filled up with like what 30 bucks. Yeah. 20 bucks. So I seen you outside at Beast Coast. How do you feel about Beast Coast doing the events back again, man? I love it. Was down for a little bit because of COVID. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna say I love that it's invite only because I feel like everyone should be a part of, mm -hmm. you know, if you if a, a show if you want to attend a show, I feel like you should. But yeah. I mean, I also do um, like the invite only because it's people you know, people mm -hmm. that bring good cars and, mm -hmm. and all the burnouts people stay away yeah. and all the, all the hooligans start, stay away. And I, I, I like that part too. So I, I understand both the sides. The takeover shit's nuts. The takeover, man. I don't know what's the, I will never understand the concept of how it's cool to get hit by the quarter panel of a charger, bro. And people- For likes though? Yeah. 
and people like people right? are hanging out of the car out of the windows and stuff and yeah, like the closest thing that we had to that was watching jackass like this shit these kids are literally living yeah, in the world that's yeah. just nuts i mean but those are like yeah professional like Travis Pastrana type type yeah. stuff, you know, but yeah, no, it keeps those people away, and I, yeah. I, I like I like it. I lo- I, yeah. I like the the collective. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe it's one of those things that you know, as I'm getting older and older people looked at us as like, well, why is he slamming his car, or whatever, whatever. But you know what? I consider it. You know, probably this is their year, but you know, same way how we had ours, and you know, as we wrap this up, I always ask these two final questions. Uh, what was your year for you? Uh, like? 2017 was my best year. Dude, everybody says the my same My favorite thing. year. Yo, and I got butchered. I made a post. I was like, yeah, 2016 was the best year in the car scene. 2016, 2017, roasted. And some people agree, but some people were just like, nah, man, further back, like OG shit, you know, and I can respect it. Everybody has their own period, but so 2017 was your year. What makes it your year for you? It was my year for me because... Um, it was the peak of the FRS. Yeah. I mean, the car just got painted mm-hmm. green. Uh, I what made just. You know with the green? <laughs> it's. Uh, I wanted it to stay Toyota. Okay. Related, mm-hmm. and I always enjoyed a good 1960s Toyota Land Cruiser. Always okay. enjoyed them. The two doors okay. with the white top. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, you know what? I, I told myself, if I ever get a chance to paint any car, it's going to be the Toyota 1967 Land Cruiser green. Okay. And that's what I went with. I stuck, I stuck with my, my gut, and I, that's what I painted it. Nice. So what else happened for you in 2017? 2017, I won Best Static at Tuna Revo. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember where your car was posted up on the side. I was like, damn, that photo's yep. gonna be fun. I'll be, yo, I took so many photos of that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I got made fun of on some JDM Turbo page oh. <laughs> for getting stuck at that gas station leaving oh, Tuna shit. Revo. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yo. Yeah, I mean, I got, I got roasted. I mean, uh, I, did a, a, I did a really, really good burnout at my friend Cody's house that yeah. year. Uh, he just opened that that shop. Mm-hmm. It's still open, by the way. Shout out to Cody. Shout out to Cody Waste. Yeah, yeah. Um, I you know I I marked my spot. Mm-hmm. And uh, 2017, I just didn't care. I was doing everything. Yeah. I hit every show. I was winning Best Static at every show. I mean, I was the Tom Brady that year. I was yeah. I was doing it. Okay. You know. Okay. I mean, I was taking awards left and right. Not that that matters, obviously, mm-hmm. but but it feels good to be respected for the work that you put in, though. Right. That's the thing. It feels good to be appreciated for something that you completed. Yeah. Or more or less for yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And I liked it. I liked it. My yeah. girlfriend was, my girlfriend at the time was hitting every show with me. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys were all at every show with me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We, yeah. we were just young and just fuck chilling. it, who cares? That was it. And it was always the vibe after the show too, because I remember Philly and just be like, yo, let's go grab some cheesesteaks. And then that yeah. long cruise home, and yeah. we all made sure that we were good on the way back home. Right. Nobody was like, We'll go figure it out or anything like that. And that's what it was when it was bobbing. It's like everybody rode out together, yep. you know? Yep. And, it, and it made me appreciate those vibes. Like when we rolled out to Beast Coast, it was like old school vibes. Yeah, like, you know, we I like that, man. We pulled up at the gas station. Yeah. Shout out to Charlton. That's like the main spot. <laughs> that's a spot. That's a spot. And then we all cruised out, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, yo, you see that steady? Yo, you know, moments. Mexico. But, um. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it was good times. <laughs> yeah, it was good times. It was, it was the best times. Mm-hmm. So as we wrap this up with the final question, I always say not to be morbid, but, you know, as we come to an end on the pod, what's a mark that you want to leave or something that you want to be known for within the car scene, your photography, or just life in general? I want to be, and this is for life in general, I want to be known as one of the nicest guys anyone's ever met. Um, you, you know, in today's world, people uh, always boast about having 99 plus requests on their Instagram mm-hmm. or having 7,000 friend requests on Facebook and, and this and that and not accepting that. But I don't care. Mm-hmm. If you message me on Instagram, if you message me on Facebook, I'm going to reply. I have zero message requests yeah. on my Instagram because I love talking to everyone. I like hearing what you have to say. You know, mm-hmm. I, I enjoy I want to talk to everyone. I want to make everyone feel appreciated. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I just... I want to know. I want to be known as one of the nicest people anyone's ever met. Uh, I respect that's, it. That's that's my thing. I yeah. respect it. 
and, and, and kindness goes a long way, you know, not everyone's having a good day. Um, you know, people go through different things at different times. People don't know what other people are going through. And, and if you can even help once or twice or, you know, anyone during your day, mm -hmm. it may not mean nothing to you, but it means a lot to them. And that's, that's, that's what matters to me. Facts. That's facts. All right, any shout outs? Anybody you want to shout out to everyone I'm friends with? Shout out to Rex for hosting me <laughs> um, on this podcast. Shout out to Matt at Beast Coast, Brian currently at Eastside Motoring, uh, Eastside Motorsports or whatever, uh, Panda, Izzy, Mike, Vic, everyone, everyone that I've, I've made friends with throughout my journey at, uh, in, the, in the car scene. Mm -hmm. um, Shout out to you guys for listening and hearing me out. Uh, I appreciate every one of you guys, and that's it. All right, my guy. Well, I Shout out to my mom. Yeah, I know oh, she's shit. watching this right now. Mama, I'm on Mommy, TV. <laughs> I'm on TV. I love you. All right, my guy. Well, always, man, I appreciate you pulling up, man. You know it. Pod. You know it. And you guys know the vibe. To the next time, stay up, stay blessed. Peace. Peace. Thank you.